<clears throat> Hello, this is Pete Gerlach again. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, the cycle of inherited psychological wounds and ignorance that is degrading our culture and perhaps your family. The website is eight self-improvement lessons based on what I've learned in 31 years as a family therapist. This is the second of three videos focusing on some tips on how to communicate effectively with children. I've studied communication skills for 40 years. What I'm about to share with you uh, is one of the most important awarenesses that many clients and people and other learned folks have taught me. I hope you've seen uh, video number one in this series and I'm going to build on that quickly. What that said is three foundation steps you can take to um, prepare to communicate effectively with children of any age is put your true self in charge of your personality. See lesson one if you don't know what that means. Learn, model, and teach seven specific communication skills in lesson two. If you can't name these skills, you're not using them. If you're not using them, you're not teaching them to your kids. Step number three is get to know your assumptions and your attitudes about children and review them critically because you leak your attitudes and some attitudes will turn kids off. They'll make them afraid of you, distrust you, and disrespect you. Those are three foundation steps. I want to add to that in this video. One of the seven skills that I am urging you to learn to practice, if you don't already, is called by several different names. It's been around for quite a while. One of the earliest time things I've heard it called is mirroring. Other people have called it active listening. Stephen Covey and people who follow him call it empathic listening. I prefer that term. It feels more accurate. Fundamentally, empathic listening is focusing on your partner, noticing what they say, do, notice their face, their body, their voice tone, be aware of your partner, and periodically say back to them what you believe they're trying to say. It does not mean you're trying to agree with them. You can hold your own opinion, but just to say back, you feel, you think, you need. Uh, empathic listening can sound like you were really excited. You were scared. You were so angry. You were frustrated made you mad that you hoped that she, you wanted them to say back what you hear your child saying in briefly in your own words without multi-syllable words. Don't forget kids don't have the vocabulary you have. <clears throat> well, they may not say, what does that mean? What do people do instead of empathic listening with children? In my experience, see if this is true in your house or when you were a child in that house. Often, busy, distracted parents interrupt kids, they talk over kids, they talk at kids, they lecture, they criticize, they blame, they bring up the past. They do many other things than just Listen. Another thing that other experts recommend, which I totally agree with, is as you listen, maintain comfortable eye contact. If the child is physically small, kneel, sit in a chair, get down on their level so you're looking at them equally rather than down on them. How often do you really listen to your child? Did your parents or the adults who raised you listen to you? This applies to kids of all ages, including teenagers. 
more on that in the third uh, video in this series. So the first thing I am recommending to you to promote effective communication between you and the young people in your life. Charge yourself with the responsibility of learning how to practice, model, and teach empathic listening. Stephen Covey says that's listening with your heart. Try and empathize with this little person. Um, as you learn to do that and watch the results, one of the things, one of the results that that brings about with people of any age is they're much more apt to talk openly with you than to be guarded or reserved or repressed. <clears throat> the second specific skill that you can put to advantage in working and communicating with kids of any age uh, is a form of assertion. Assertion is the learned skill of being able to say something in a way that your partner can really hear you. One of the uh, variations of assertion, effective assertion, can be called an I message, a capital letter I, as opposed to I, as opposed to you. I messages have three parts. Very simple. The first part is a, an objective statement about what, the, what you see and hear the other person doing, thinking, and feeling. You act like a, an audio recorder or a video cam. Just say back what you observe, briefly, objectively, without judgment. Uh, I noticed in the last three minutes you needed to interrupt me several times. That's not good, you're wrong, you're a moron, you're stupid, I hate it. It's just saying back, this is what I've noticed. The second part of an I message is, say how the observed behavior affects you. When you need to interrupt me so frequently, I'm beginning to feel frustrated and disrespected. Say this with good eye contact, without sarcasm, without bringing up the past, without asking questions, without moralizing, which we all love to do, especially older people with kids. Let me tell you why this is bad. Uh-uh. Say back what you see them doing and how it affects you. The third and optional part of an iMessage is, and here's what I need from you now. Use iMessages instead of blaming, shaming, name-calling, interrupting, lecturing. These are popular adult ways of trying to get their needs met with kids who are disinterested, focused elsewhere, have a very short attention span, maybe feeling defensive, shamed, guilty, uh, excited about something far, far away. <clears throat> do you ever do any of those things with your kids? When you do, it will train kids, he or she, meaning you, she won't listen. She won't understand. I can't talk to her. There's no point in trying to talk to her. She doesn't care what I feel. She doesn't care what I need. She doesn't like me. She thinks I'm stupid. She thinks I'm bad. That's what kids feel if you don't speak to them assertively when you need something from them. Set a limit. Set a consequence. Use an I message. Here's a bonus. I messages are also one of the best ways I've come across in 40 years of study for praising children. How did your parents praise you, if at all? And they say, wow, that's great, or good job, or I'm so pleased for you, thanks, thanks a lot. An I message can, can, give, can make praise dodge proof, so to speak. You ever had a child or an adult if you want to praise them and thank them for something, they go, oh, I was just lucky. Anybody could do that. Then blow it off. You know how that leaves you feeling? Feeling? <clears throat> it leaves me feeling unheard. It's like they didn't receive what you're trying to give them. A way of making dodge-proof praise is to use an iMessage with a child. Example, 
Jenny, when you put the dishes in the sink without my asking you, it made my afternoon a whole lot easier. I had more time to do the stuff that was important uh, to me. Thanks so much. That is an eye message. You observed the child putting the dishes in the sink. You said how it affected you, and you expressed your gratitude. How does that compare with the way you praise the young people in your life? The third of three suggestions I want to make in this video for improved communication with any kids at all is teach them how to problem solve. You may know how to do that. You may not know how that you know how to do that. Lesson seven, sorry, lesson two gives you seven skills. The first six of them prepares you to do the seventh skill, which is problem solving. Briefly, problem solving is saying your needs and my needs are of equal importance, unless you're in an emergency. I need to know what you need. I want you to know what I need. Once we both know our needs, let's brainstorm so we can get our needs met. Both of us. That is problem solving. In my long experience as a therapist and an observer, very few adults do that with each other, let alone with their children. Compare problem solving to what you do now. My hunch is you will get more more of what you need from an average kid, improve your relationship, improve your self-esteem, and improve the serenity in your house. So, I encourage you in the second of three videos, practice empathic listening and teach it to your kids. Practice assertion, show them how I messages feel and how to do them. Help them understand how to do problem solving, win-win problem solving. I hope you try that and enjoy the results. The third video in this series gives some suggestions specifically about how to communicate effectively with teens. I hope you'll watch that. Thanks for watching.